have to know that it is, people should be aware that there's there's a flux transfer event that happens every eight minutes. And what that is, is that the sun's uh, it, its magnetic field presses against the Earth's magnetic field. And then about every eight minutes, every eight minutes, the two fields, they merge, right? They form a portal. And particles flow back and forth. What's happening is that it, the sun's magnetic field is beginning to overwhelm the magnetic field of the Earth. More and more portals are opening, which will cause a greater energy, energy transference. With CERN running that high energy in a very confined space in relationship to the Earth, you really cause a energy bubble of types to form in a very small area, which can absolutely uh, open, it can really open a almost a permanent portal um, to itself. And, and this is a natural effect. FETs are very natural, but they can absolutely uh, increase the length of that portal connection through certain inadvertently, but they can actually utilize that energy to get extra energy out. Uh, not to be a spoiler, but they've been using some of the components in CERN uh, directly harness at a certain level because you can't utilize uh, certain elements at low levels. They only kick in at high levels, like ions. Um, ions can be utilized, but you already have to have a pretty large um, electromotive potential present. You you have to be dealing with um, with what's high powers there. And um, if they open one of these with turn running that high, and if one of these conduits actually opens, it can actually um, begin to transfer those uh, th th that helium four. Or, or I'm sorry, helium three that they're looking for, um, for other um, power concerns. But it doesn't necessarily have to go to CERN. It can actually be directed to any other facility that no one is really looking at. So while everybody is looking at CERN and they're preparing for paranormal events and, uh, because they're going to run it over a certain percentage, and it happened twice or, or the last time it happened, and people began to see giants and this, that, and the other, and then, of course, after that happened, they had to power this thing down and, and, and uh, speak to leak, so to speak. But right. now let me do it. Let me, go ahead. Go ahead, Andy. Let me toss in a couple of names. Again, Brookhaven. And then we have Latvia, Illinois, where the Fermi lab is located, which received from Brookhaven a couple of years ago their large um, niobium, titanium, super, superconducting magnet that was moved there. And so you have, you're exactly right, Michael, other locations that are becoming receptive ports for this energy and for whatever is going to come through. I, I don't disagree with you at all. I think that CERN is the instigator. It is the catalyst for the connection derived from the sun, and it definitely will be received much like a landing pad at these other laboratories. You're right. You're, you're all around the world. I've been studying this since we've been talking about it down there in California, everywhere. It's, you can, it's a pretty much a worldwide network, CERN being the largest and the new Eider in Marseille being the largest in the uh, in that field. But it's definitely a, a worldwide network. And Michael, there's something that I've thought about before. I'd like to hear both of your ideas on this. It's something, if we were to open a portal, and Christ tells us that there would be tribulation like we've never seen before. And that for a thousand years, we'll be with Christ. And at the end of that thousand years, Satan's released again. Could that portal be open for a thousand years? And Christ, and this is our only salvation, the blood on the lintel. Um, with Christ coming here and us being in our spiritual bodies, that's going to be our solution and our protection. But when Satan is released again, there could be another change. That could be another completely dimensional change back to the God in Magog era or another advancement in that. But with the things coming.
coming on earth and the way that Christ talked about that of them. We, if, if this is going into play, then we're going to see the rise of the Antichrist very quickly. But it, I'm just the thousand year millennium and the portal opening. And the, you were talking about being able to keep this thing open. Even it may even stay open like a runaway generator effect. But God knows, He knows, Christ knows, He wrote it in Revelation. But uh, well, my, my something's going to change. Is that There's going to be a dimensional change because we're not going to be in our physical body for a thousand years. Just brings that pull. All right, I think the chaos will ensue for the seven years of tribulation, and then from that point on, post Armageddon, we move into the thousand year millennium. And I agree that. At least for seven years, I think this portal could remain open. Well, uh, you know what? You know what, guys? When, when um, I know now that um, if you look into their experimentation, a lot of things have not worked, and that's just simply the restrainer not allowing them to reach full potential yet. But again, when the restrainer stops restraining these guys from doing what they're doing, because they're being guided by external intelligence here. Uh, most of your prominent scientists are, are, they were actually in communication with entities and they got a lot of information from entities. Some of your greatest mathematical uh, equations and formulas and solutions were given by, the, from the demonic realm, you might as well say. And so these guys are being restrained from absolutely you know, trying to do what they, everything they want to do. But we know that in Revelation, Apollyon Apollyon, who has the key to the bottomless pit, opens the pit. He opens the pit. And then, um, I'm sorry, Apollyon was not who did that, but the angel with the key to the bottomless pit opens it up. Apollyon being appointed over them is set free. Now, in the book of Enoch, there's also an event where all those that were bound in the middle of the inside the earth are also set free. Apollyon has been operating. Apollyon is directly responsible for giving man intelligence. Apollyon is directly responsible for influencing people like Hitler and some of your uh, the, these uh, great scientists from India. Uh, that's right. Apollyon is directly responsible for this. And when he does rise, he has an agenda, but the angel with the key to the bottomless pit is sent to unlock him. I have to, with everybody that thinks that uh, an angel's going to unlock himself from the bottomless pit, I have to disagree. When, when the angel with the key to the bottomless pit, right, he's like a, a, he's guarding the prison gates. He's simply going to unlock it because that same angel, he binds Satan and puts him in the bottomless pit for a thousand years and chains him. Okay, he's the angel with the key to the bottomless pit. But Apollyon's in the bottomless pit. The only way he can communicate with people is is uh, uh, through you know mind to mind, or if a person is meditating. But listen, when the restrainer no longer restrains, that's when this guy is coming up with all his minions. So you're looking at uh, this one who have very dark minds, like uh, uh, Hitler wasn't a nice guy, Saddam Hussein, thought he was uh, King Nixon as a reincarnated, and you got all these other folks, uh, and plus you have your great scientists, and, and they were absolutely 100% driven and sane, but they were geniuses, and they were test on all of them. And so, look, you're looking at all of this being unleashed on the surface of the earth. Will there be a tight dimensional fold, as we use the term dimensions? Yes, it will be. Will it be a horrific time? Because in those days, it was stated that men will seek death and will not find it. They will be stunned by these scorpions, right? If a scorpion stings you, their scorpion sting is very different from, you know, a regular one. I'd say the venom is affected by the way Jesus said, I give you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. That means you're immune from the venom. What venom? The venom of something very few people understand that people are, in fact, immune to. You know, I tell people all the time, you can have a wonderful day, you get a telephone call, and your entire day is ruined. What, what you essentially felt was venom. Venom comes through the form of words and a few other things. That's the venom you have power. 
to tread upon scorpions and serpents. Scorpions sting. Serpents bite. And, and you can, in fact, overcome the venom from both. Overcome the venom from both. But when Apollyon is left, and when he rises with his minions, for those who are, who are here, for those who he can touch, and who all those minions can affect, there's no escape from them. He says, in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. At that point, we're not dealing with conventional physics. The world of physics will have broken down at that point because you've introduced a new dimension with new properties and new variants, distant variables, and the constants are going to be all messed up. And then exactly it. Yeah, that new dimension could be semi-spiritual. That's why they can't die, Michael. In other words, their hand changed into where we, you know, we hope we are. The Christ comes in that star sickle is put in for the gathering of the grapes who cause that whole harvest is right. Then, what you're saying is, like you said, that they wish for death and can't be killed. In your physical body, you can kill yourself. You know what I mean? But if you're in the interdimensional change where you did not quite get into the gathering back, I'm not talking about a physical rapture. I'm talking about this is in this once Christ comes back in the spiritual dimension. We will not face God in our physical bodies. But um, at that at that point where men wishes for death, that could be because you're trapped. It's an interdimensional trap. In other words, you didn't quite make it all, all the way, but your body is in the spiritual domain far enough to where man can, you can kill your physical body, but you can't kill your soul. Now, you don't want to kill yourself because what happens to your soul. But at that point, at that change, and that key to the bottomless pit is not a physical key. It could be simply like telling Tesla or Oppenheimer the key to the formula that makes it complete its own. Yeah, so let's go right back to the physics, the quantum physics. Why are they focused on you? My friends, J7409 here with you. Folks, what you're looking at here, this is the volcano Colimo in Mexico. So we're going to turn it on and let you look at it. It's, it yes, it's erupting right now, so let's turn it on right Whoa, check it out. It seems that a Kalima volcano is currently in a phase of heightened activity. Now, this might be a prelude to one of the major eruptions that's happened at about 100-year intervals in historic times. But there she blows. And once again, this is Kalima in Mexico. It's going off right now. It's at one of its heightened stages. So I thought this was very interesting. Seems like volcanoes are going off all around us now. There's ash coming from several, several volcanoes throughout the world. Some of the ash is landing here in the U.S. But look at that guy. Wow. I found this. thought it was quite interesting. I wanted to share it with you so you could see exactly what was going on with it. Once again, this is Volcano Colimo in Mexico. Be safe, my friends. Be blessed. Keep your eyes on the sky and everything around you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for sticking by me. Thanks for sharing my information. You have a good day. February the 6th, 2015. You're looking at the CERN logo. and It's an intro to some of their videos and models. Notice the expanding feel in their model. I'm sure everyone's seen the 666 in the middle also. That's noticed that a long time ago. But now in these new video models, they're showing that expanded feel. That's what I've been saying a long time, guys. We pull this up. This is on the Frank Franco-Swiss border just outside of Geneva, Switzerland. 17 underground mile loop. It's a 17 mile loop, the large one. You've got Atlas down here in the bottom. That's the largest machine ever built. You've seen this in a lot of our videos. This is what's going to contain the explosion after it's fired around this ring. They're getting it up into a, a to nine. 99.99% of the speed of light. Einstein warned us about atomic energy, and he warned us about getting uh, particles up to the speed of light. We'll talk about that. But guys are simply injected and from a small ball of uh, hydrogen, H2. I've seen that in pictures inside the laboratory. Then the uh, electrons are stripped of the negative charge. They become protons, and the voltage is applied. 
into the particle accelerator here. Now, each ring is different electromagnets. It increases the speed, like increasing the speed of a subway train or an electric train. Same principle, much higher, though. Again, 99.9% .9 of the speed of light. You've got a series of phases this process has. First, once you get that speed up, they're injected into these three rings. What happens when you increase the speed, the particles, they increase the mass. You can, If you ever get to the speed of light or infinite mass, it will cause the destruction of the universe. Then they start applying voltage. That's the symbology here and increasing the speed. Again, you're at, at that point, the magnets apply to control it because without the magnets there, the particles would escape from that ring. Now it goes into this section. They're starting to mix it up a little and increase the speed. Now notice the size of the particles and the speed. They're expanding inside of this particular ring as it gets faster and faster. They're increasing their size. They're increasing their speed. Very important. Now at this pressure, they're going to go into another set of rings before they get into the main collider. And you're dealing with, at 99.9% .9 the speed of light, these have been clocked at 11,000 loops per second in the big ring, not the little ring, but in the big 17 mile loop, 11,000 times per second. Then they, inside the big machines like Atlas and the uh, well, CSI at the top guys, they can monitor the explosion as they let these cross the pass and I'll show you that. Now in the in 2013 they discovered the Higgs boson, but in 2012 they reached four uh, teravolts. Now, they want to reach 14 now, or which would be seven per side once they launch these and split them into separate tunnels. And you're going to see that coming in separate directions into this main tunnel. And this thing is huge. You see the yellow line. That was the particle accelerators. Now, as they get this thing going, and they have before, and it's been measured on our magneto pulse this time. I've warned about this, guys. I led the research in showing the sun causes the quakes. And I'm going to show you and prove to you that CERN is causing shield damage. It's causing, it can cause a reverse of the magneto pulse from the back direction simply by weakening our shield down to almost zero. Let's check this out. Again, they're going to inject into the big ring. I want to go back here a moment. At that point, they start messing with our magneto pulse at our shields, and they're letting us know this in their video. Notice the particles. Notice the expanding ring. That is because CERN's magnetic field will be 100,000 times more powerful than Earth's. If they reach 7 uh, TeV per loop going in different directions so that at collision point red inside of atlas they will achieve 14 teravolts 14 they got four last time and guys when they did they almost destroyed this planet i'm going to show you that before it's over with as they accelerate guys they again enter atlas where the explosion happens and it's trapped and they have different monitoring points on that circle so they can compare notes but here is one of the warnings not only did einstein warn us about reaching the speed of light with particles, not photons, which are light particles, which do not have mass, but protons, things like that, that do have mass, it's critical. But it says, <clears throat> again, CERN is due to reopen March 25th. Guys, the date now is March 13th. But it's saying Dr. Stephen Hawkins recently warned that the reactivation in March of CERN's Large Hadron Collider could pose grave damages to our planet. The ultimate reality, reality check, we are warned. He says, he comes straight out and says, the God particle, <clears throat> what they call the Higgs boson, was found by CERN could destroy the universe, leaving time and space collapsed. When you hear about time and space and God particle, guys, what comes to your mind? Do you ever think back about Daniel? Remember what he said about changing time? He said the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it to pieces. He goes on to say, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. Does that bring any more meaning to that verse, guys? We're here in this kingdom in this last times. But that's what we're dealing with. It says, recent developments prove that the scientific community is no longer able to explain reality without looking at the supernatural. They're looking into dimensional changes. They're looking for several things, and I'm not sure if they were at first aware of all the side effects like on our magnetopause but once they started getting that information in they started doing some shutdowns this is a schedule for this year i'm going to go through this more in another video but the weeks are not like a regular calendar you see monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday down the left side notice that week actually starts december the 29th where my arrow is now so in the this is just february as they started cranking this thing up in december last year 2014. notice here 
We're inside the red zone, 1-4-2015. Magneto Pauls is getting stripped down. Notice up to the seventh, the last day. Just complete compression. Now, they've been running tests since then, but this is when they started in that red zone, what they control, called controls maintenance. But I recorded this back in December 19th. This was the first super anomaly that I call it, but we had almost a full plasma discharge forward, guys, as they were testing this thing, and almost a complete reversal of our magneto pause. Now, I've got that in part two, and I've got the images saved back in 2012, March, on the dates when they reached the 4TEV, that uh, they did completely reverse the magneto pause. They've hit a lot of those images, but they've been saved, and I'm going to show them to you guys. I'm going to put the sound on it. It will be up in a few minutes. Heads up. Be safe. I'm level, because that's where the laws of physics reside. We have the standard model, which deals with the scale of atoms and molecules, the standard Einstein, Einstein, uh, and sorry, the Einstein model, they call the standard model. When you go to the quantum level, you deviate from the standard model. They are trying to create a new type of standard model for physics. Michael, you hear it right on the head. Physics will change when we have this direct connection with the sun and we have this transforming power. And that's what they're after. They want to transform the human race, either to kill it and annihilate it or transform people into demonically possessed creatures that are unlike anything that we have any frame of reference for because, quite literally, they're changing the rules of physics at the quantum level utilizing stern you that's it anthony you go back the way under god consciousness your your ability to recognize god that level of consciousness then you're trapped and they warn yep. you know what you know what too the uh, for a long time for a long time here, here's the deal the the nephilim would be the, I guess, the anti-god particle let me say that, uh, anti-Bosman, Higgs Bosman. <clears throat> Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say that the Nephilim children, the, the children of the fallen angels, their spirits are still on the earth. They're known as evil spirits, right? They have affected other people. They've had more children. Those people died. Their spirits still roam the earth. They're called evil spirits. We've been going through cloning events and everything else where the spirits are coming from. They're not coming from heaven. They're coming from these fallen, the children of the fallen angels. If they can break the person's neurological connection and they can cause a person not to be uh, linked to the body so much, their spirits will drift while another one takes over. One of the explanations of these people not dying is that when that happens, when these things come to the surface of the earth, the surface of the earth is the, the, the laws, the constants, will no longer be in effect. In other words, one of these evil things could perpetuate a person's life if they chose to do so, because they like to torment people. You actually see a description of a person being tormented by a demonic entity, but they'll be able to operate with or without a body at that time, because the dimensional fold would have happened. The restrainer, I believe, is the angel with the key to the bottomless pit. I think the restrainer stops restraining, and when he does so, that is how Apollyon and these rest of these things start to come to the surface of the earth. I also know by reading, nothing really happens. Nothing really happens until that event. And then everything after that event is absolutely horrific. Everything after that event is horrific. But everything before that is just simply conventional. We deal with spirits now. They were dealing with, with dealing with them then. But after this event, when Apollyon comes out, everything is different. Everything changes. The, these things are really go up this year. And it, you, well, I, I believe it was this year. Uh, it's, uh, I, I tell you what, the spiritual realm, folks, is real. And it has, uh, it, there are things in the spiritual realm, and if you're not washed by the blood of the Lamb, it will absolutely scare the peanuts out of your M&Ms. <laughs> Even if you're covered by the blood of the Lamb, they can really uh, startle you. And it's only through the Holy Spirit 
and God's love towards us, that we're able to not have heart attacks during that time. But it was said in the Bible that men's hearts would fail them for fear for what is coming upon the earth. First of all, they're going to have a hint of what's coming. A hint, just a hint, and their hearts are going to fail them for fear. But the event is absolutely going to take place, and we see a correlation of mankind working in tandem and with the heavens. And all these events are coalescing. They're coalescing. And here's yes, a big one, right? Here, here's a big one. Before the bottomless pit is open, something happens. You know what happens? Uh, uh, the, uh, a portion of the moon and a portion of the sun and a portion of the sky are blackened. Something came into our solar system, guys. Something came into our solar system and darkened a portion of the sky, a portion of the moon, a portion of the sun. It's not that a piece of the sun is going to be missing. It's not that a piece of the moon is going to be missing. It's not that a piece of the sky is missing. Something is obstructing. Something is obstructing. Something has either formed or has stationed itself between the earth and everything else that we see. And you know what? If a portal is open and it blocks out one third of the sky, can you imagine how big that portal is? That can be an angel portal. It would have to be out there. If they open that portal, it's going to be absolutely black on the inside. It's going to blot out a portion of the sun, a portion of the moon, a portion of the day, and it's going to be open for a while. And then right after that, it says what? The angel with the key to the bottomless pit opens the bottomless pit. Right after that, that's when that happens. It all fits for the timing of the activities with CERN. That's why it's this year. It certainly, it, it, you know what, it's it certainly, appears. something is very close. Something is very close. If they have success with CERN, Anthony, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it'll be all downhill from there for a lot of people if they have success. It'll be the game changer. I think yeah. you're exactly right in terms of blotting out the sun and the moon and the stars. I totally agree with you that it's a black portal. Yeah, when you think it, about it, you know. If you think about the Higgs field, the Higgs field is an actual, described as an actual matrix. Now, there's a word that comes up in the popular culture, but it is described as a matrix, as a, as a grid work. And when you separate that, when you tell, back up just a little bit, when you have particles that are passing through the Higgs field, which essentially is the dark matter and the dark energy of the universe, they actually slow down as they pass through it and gain mass as they pass through it into our dimension. They become heavier particles. That being called dark energy, dark fabric, dark matter, fits right into what you're describing as blotting out the sun. We talked about that being five sticks of all matter. You don't matter. According to Sun. So when, when you open up that fabric, what are you looking at? You're looking at dark matter. And we're observing it from a physical realm. So we, we, we are limited to seeing things in a physical realm, observing it, but the effects of it. Our, our, everything is going to become clear. Now, remember, the sky rolls together as a scroll, too. So something has happened so impactful that it, it's just all over from there. It's all over from there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the stars, and the stars of heaven. Something happens to not only the Earth, but the entire solar system, guys, because the stars from heaven are also going to fall to Earth. If you open anything, if they open a portal, if anything is open, and they do it artificially, it's going to come with massive consequences, folks. That's, that's just, you know, they, they cannot predict everything that's going to come through on the other side. Wouldn't you say that that's akin to a vacuum? Yeah. Yes, because it, what, if, if that energy, the anti in quantum computing, the energy potential in that little tiny little slip where they can uh, uh, grab this data from, from the, the, that, that, that pulse of energy that's received is pretty high coming from nowhere, right? That means just pressure on the other side. The other dimension has a lot of pressure against it. If some, 
something opens up a hole in that other dimension, lots of stuff are going to pour through. And guess what? Wouldn't that be a bottomless pit if it were black? And the key, I keep going back to this, the key to this is data guy got a quantum computer. Because that has up the quantum bubble opened up that portal on a very small scale. But you tie that into controlling the largest machine ever created, and that's CERN. Now you put the two together, and you have our scenario. That's it. Keep it down. It, you know what, that's, that's why, again, I'll say it does, it does not pay for folks to play with their salvation. Uh, they should really become students of the word. Um, we are in the last age. This is the last time before that thousand-year reign, which seals the cap on the last time. But we're also a generation who is purposed to be here. Everyone who is here, you really can't say, I cannot handle this. That's not true. Everyone who is here is purposed to be here. And although we don't like what's happening, you are here, ladies and gentlemen. You are here. And uh, these two gentlemen are, are conveying lots of information. Hello, everybody. Wild Bill for America here. And everybody in this country needs to hear this letter from James Bingham. He writes, Be careful, America. In the UK, they came in peaceful and quiet. Then they built mosques. Then more came over and they built even more mosques. They then demanded simple things like halal food. Then started demanding that pork be removed from menus at schools as they were offended. Now they have Sharia law and no-go areas for non-Muslims. Women and children are being raped as nobody dares speak out for fear of being called a racist. They are beheading people in our streets. They hold demonstrations in the UK saying, behead those who do not follow Islam. They won't integrate with Brits. They are demanding our women wear the hijab. They want total domination. Fight for your freedom, America, because they are coming your way. Thank you for this letter, James. What you describe is the Muslim pattern. They do the same thing in every country that allows them in. The moderate Muslims are in it just as much as the throat cutters. Now, for some inexplicable reason, in both the UK and the USA, people are paralyzed with fear of being called a racist. Standing against the evils of Islam is not racist. It's the right thing to do. Never be ashamed of protecting the women and children from rape even rape done in the name of religion. The people of Europe are horrified by the viciousness of the Muslim rape gangs. Over 10,000 women have been raped by these Muslim men and the evil media will not report it for fear of offending the Muslims. Well, here's a wild bill bullet of truth for the world. It's time to offend Muslims and call them out for their crimes against humanity. It's time to label Islam the most racist force on earth and to pin the name racist on everyone who supports Islam. And it's time to fight back. As far as I know, there are no Muslim rape gangs operating in the USA. We have this little thing called the Second Amendment that allows women to carry a gun. And when a woman in this country shoots a rapist, we tend to call that a happy ending. Islam is attacking the USA by infiltrating the highest levels of government and our current president is all in for putting Muslim Brotherhood operatives into government and law enforcement. If Americans don't start pushing back effectively then we will soon have the monsters marching in the streets and bringing violence to our neighborhoods. Islam is dedicated to the overthrow of the US government and constitution. Sedition is the word for it and sedition is a crime that brings a 20-year prison term. It's time to get tough with those who want to overthrow our nation. And it's time to get tough with the people in our government who are collaborating with the enemy. Special Operations Speaks is the group that I think is best qualified to coordinate America's pushback against tyranny. SOS are all retired Special Forces commanders and they are the best analysts and planners I have known. This is Wild Bill for America taking a stand against those who are against America. Thank you for watching, and America, bless God, again.
Hello everyone. So we received some photos here and we cannot confirm or deny what we're looking at. Now first off, I'm just going to come out and say that I'm not saying that this is Planet Nibiru or Planet X and I'm also not saying that it's not. What I'm going to do is share these photos with you and let you decide for yourself what you think it is and hey leave your comment let me know what you guys think because this this is what I did I sent these photos when I received them I went over them and then I sent them out to others and I can't get confirmation one way or the other they're saying that they same thing as I said they can't say that it is but then again they can't say that it's not but it really emphasizes the importance of our dependency, our real dependency, in that heavenly realm and being under the blood of the Lamb. But most importantly, folks, to have your armor on because in the end it's going to be a war. The war that's happening right now is going to spill over into this dimension and your souls are at stake. Your souls are at stake. And it's a lot of garbage information out there. And you know what, Anthony and Jesse, I see a lot of information are leading people astray from a true path into a, uh, a, a path where they, they really think they're going to enter into nirvana without being tested or anything else. That is not the truth. That's just simply not the truth. But when a test does come, doesn't it also qualify our character? Don't we build character? Aren't we tested so that we know our strengths and weaknesses and truth? I mean, would it be a shame to think that you're strong enough to endure what's coming upon the earth and you're not? Who are we, that we would delude ourselves if we thought we were strong enough to endure something and we couldn't. And the Lord absolutely loves honesty. And we should really gauge our lives, our strengths and weaknesses from what's coming. But this is the last time. Ladies, and there is no, this, this is it. This is it. This is the final transition of mankind. They're going into eternity. The question is, which uh, which road in eternity are they they're going to be in? You know, which road? Because if your soul is condemned, that means your heart and your soul turn to blackness. That blackness, Anthony. Can, you know, I had a dream one time, and I have to state this again. I was real little. Uh, I was tiny, tiny. But the dream. That's right. Now we Go ahead, go ahead, Let me toss in a couple of names. Again, Brookhaven, and then we have Latvia, Illinois, where the Fermi lab is located, which received from Brookhaven a couple of years ago their large um, niobium, titanium, super, superconducting magnet that was moved there. And so you have, you're exactly right, Michael, other locations that are becoming receptive ports for this energy and for whatever is going to come through. I, I don't disagree with you at all. I think that CERN is the instigator. It is the catalyst for the connection derived from the sun and it definitely will be received much like a landing pad at these other laboratories. Magnetic field presses against the Earth's magnetic field and then about every eight minutes, every eight minutes, the two fields, they merge, right? They form a portal, and particles flow back and forth. <clears throat> What's happening is that it, the sun's magnetic field is beginning to overwhelm the magnetic field of the Earth. More and more portals are opening, which will cause a greater energy, energy transference. With CERN, running that high energy in a very confined space in relationship to the earth you really cause a energy bubble of types to form in a very small area which can absolutely uh, open it can really open a almost a permanent portal um, to itself and, and this is a natural effect FETs are very natural but they can absolutely uh, increase
increase the length of that portal connection through certain inadvertently, but they can actually utilize that energy to get extra energy out. Uh, not to be a spoiler, but they've been using some of the components in CERN uh, directly harness at a certain level because you can't utilize uh, certain elements at low levels. They only kick in at high levels, like ions. Um, ions can be utilized, but you already have to have a pretty large um, electromotive potential present. You, you have to be dealing with, uh, with, with high powers there. And um, if they open one of these with turn running that high, and if one of these conduits actually opens, it can actually um, begin to transfer those, uh, th th that helium-4, or, or I'm sorry, helium-3 that they're looking for, uh, for other um, power concerns. But it doesn't necessarily have to go to CERN. It can actually be directed to any other facility that no one is really looking at. So while everybody is looking at CERN and they're preparing for paranormal events and, uh, because they're going to run it over a certain percentage, and it happened twice or, or the last time it happened, and people began to see giants and this, that, and the other, and then, of course, after that happened, they had to power this thing down and, and, and uh, speak the leak, so to speak. But Uh, it, it 